well, before we begin, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm Michael. My last name is Sheldon. <laughs> and it's Irish, uh, Scottish, and it means people of the hills. So that's me. Awesome. 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 I love it. And you've been a person of the hills, I'm assuming. I, I have uh, more of my ancestry has. We, uh, m- when we migrated to the U- U.S., we ended up in the Ozarks. And, uh, and that is where my, my heritage, as far as what I know, comes from. A lot of bluegrass and, uh, and family fiddle fest and that sort of thing. Well, you came from the bluegrass to the Blue Ridge. So yeah, yep, yep. what drew you to Jesus to begin with? <laughs> oh, man, it's a really good question. And I am someone who grew up in church and I grew up in Southern church where you were in church. That was your whole social life. So Sunday morning uh, for Sunday school, then the service mm. and then Sunday night for um, what was called RAs, Royal Ambassadors. Um, while my parents went to another, um, sermon and then Wednesday nights. And during the summer, there was 10 tremendous Thursdays where we had special speakers. And so, um, my dad was also on the leadership team in some capacity. So he was responsible for 15 families in our church for their pastoral care and connection. So they were always at our house, um, swimming in the pool or something of that nature. So church was just part of my my understanding of the world. Yeah. And, um, and I loved it. I'm not someone who resented that. I actually loved it. Mm. And God is his, his grace has been kind to me to allow me to have close connections with pastoral people. Mm. Um, and while my dad did the best with what he had, obviously, because he's human, there's, there's things that, that he doesn't have that I needed. And God provided that in these pastoral um, mentors. Mm. And that's, that's always been a part of my life. Um, and so I, I've always been attracted to the idea of serving Jesus, but I didn't know that it wasn't based on my performance. Mm. Mm. And so it was in, in between my eighth grade and freshman year that I went to summer camp against my will. And, um, And there was some, there was some other trauma that happened in my early childhood Mm. that was, that was kind of forcing this, this idea of performance and then Mm. other, other ways that performance gets affirmed without people asking deeper questions. Mm. Um, And so by the time I was in eighth grade, I was, I was already burning out Mm. and, and, um, and I did, I hadn't actually met Jesus. I'd only met the ministry performance. Mm, wow. Um, so I, um, was at their, that whatever the speaker was doing. And I was just pretty sure the guy was just full of crap. Um, and I was mad. I was just like, this guy is literally telling me to, to work harder, to do more, to oh, be wow. more. Oh, wow. Wow. And when he had the altar call, everybody went forward and I went backwards oh, wow. and, and I actually, I snuck out of the, out of the meeting hall and I went back to my bunk mm. and I was just mad. And I was just saying, God, I don't, I can't, I can't do this. Mm. I, I can't do this. And that's actually precisely where, where we all need to get. Mm. Um, that's, that's where I had to be. Wow. And so I, I opened the word. Um, I was actually going to use the word to mock God, you know, kind of pray like, oh, you said this, well, where's that? You said this, where's that? Wow. Um, and I opened it up to John one, one and read about Jesus being the light that the darkness can't overcome. Mm. And then that just spoke to me like, oh, Jesus is enough. Mm. And that is what attracted me to him was like, I don't have to keep, keep this appearance up. Like I can just trust him. I can, I can give my life to him and let him be the light. And the work is just allowing his light to shine through um, wow. and to transform me. And then my transformation actually works in other people's lives too. Yeah. yeah. So that's what attracted me. 
Wow. Well, yeah. <clears throat> not at the altar call. You, 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 you no. ran from the altar call and found Jesus. Yeah. That's just, yeah. that's fascinating, man. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> he met you there. <laughs> Uh, I think a lot of us can relate to growing up in and around church, but it sounds like there wasn't a moment where you weren't doing church in some form or fashion, right, <laughs> then, right. you know, how your family fin- spends your free time, um, all the, all the calendar events at the church. But um, yeah, I think for a lot of us who, who grow up in the church have a, maybe a harder time trying to articulate our story because it feels like the story's been going on for as long as we can remember. So, uh, yeah. and that's, that's a, what a, what a beautiful encounter with Jesus, man. But what challenges your faith, uh, even today, what, what challenges your faith? Yeah. I, I, I still that performance, um, metric, wow. uh, that, that pressure to, to be more and to, to prove to God that I was worth the sacrifice. Um, so, um, that, and, and for me, like realizing that faith isn't in my ability to do stuff. It's not, um, I, I say a lot to myself, faith is not bravado. And w- that's how we use it. Like, oh, just have faith, be brave. Mm-hmm. And faith is not bravado. Faith is actually knowing where to put your trust. Wow. Yeah. And, and so it's, if, if faith is in my own ability to just get through Like that's a different character quality. That's perseverance. Mm -hmm. Um, But faith is saying the God who saved me is still saving me. Mm -hmm. He's still sustaining me. And because of that, even though I'm scared, even though I've, I'm failed, even though um, I want a different outcome or I want to get out of where I'm at, like God is still big and he's still there. And so, so faith is without faith in the proper thing, all that other stuff crumbles. So it's, so, still, it's still a challenge for you to, oh man. to not uh, have this sense of trying to earn it. Is that, 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 that yes. I'm sure we can resonate with that. Um, yes. Yeah. That, it's good to know this long on yeah. walk that that's still, you know, something that you, yeah. you to remind yourself of. Well, I think a lot of us have an internal dialogue mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and my internal dialogue is, is constantly telling me I'm either too much or not enough. And so there's, there's never a moment where you're just like, God is enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so it's, it's good in terms of faith for, to be able to have the Holy spirit to kind of refocus me when I say those things to myself, like, well, maybe, maybe you are too much sometimes. Maybe you're not enough sometimes, but God's, God's is. Mm. And, um, and that's the metric he's using. That internal dialogue of negativity or imbalance, it doesn't go away <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. <laughs> but I believe the Holy Spirit gives you ways to, to, to cope with it health healthfully that's right the challenge remains but god is god is in it with you so yeah uh wow that's good what keeps you amid the challenges holding on to your faith amid all the things that have gone on and 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 all the ways you could have walked away from this what keeps you holding on to faith in jesus there's a psalm where it talks about the lord being the lifter of my head so this is psalm three and it's a psalm of david when he fled from his own son absalom oh wow so it's it's in the midst of trouble, yeah. And uh, and I'll just read out to the first Salah, uh, second Salah, Selah. O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God, Selah. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered me from his holy hill. Salah. And I feel like, especially in the, in the social climate and, and just the fact that everything seems to be chaos, um, to remember that um, it's, it's almost like God is taking me as a child and he's saying, no, 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 lift your head up, look at me, mm. look at me. Mm. And I want to look at all this other stuff. And he's like, 
no, look, look at me. But it reminds me of Peter when he steps out of the boat onto the stormy sea. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the challenge is to just keep, the challenge is not to walk on the water, it's to keep his eyes focused on Jesus. Mm. And because Jesus is the one enabling him to get through the storm and see. Wow. Um, Jesus is his sure footing. And as soon as he takes his eyes off of Jesus, he loses his footing. So I feel like we're in a storm tossed world. And, and the challenge is to realize that our footing is not found in the earth beneath us, but in the God who created it. Wonderful. So that's, that's one you tuck away in your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Mid this. And, and it's not just that, but there's also the reality that um, I deeply believe in, in God's sovereignty within the community of the church. And, and I know a lot of people, the church is their reason for um, questioning or doubting their faith. Mm. What, they're, what they're actually rejecting is, is what the church has been. Mm. Um, and I don't want to deny or ignore that pain, but that has not been my story. Mm. Um, my story has been that that God has provided people in the context of church that have been this relentless pointing toward Jesus. Wow! Yeah, and um, and so I I value that. I deeply value the church. Yeah, and faith faith is a group project, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. We need each other. Uh, that's good, man. That's really good. If you were going to talk to I don't know. 13, 16, 18 year old Mike Sheldon <clears throat> growing up in, in today's world. Um, what's some key advice that you would give to a young believer? Yeah. yeah. What I wish I would have heard mm -hmm. as a 13 year old is every sphere of life is going to be demanding that you prove yourself except for your relationship with God. That's not his demand. He's not asking you to prove yourself. He's not asking you to try and earn or gain anything. And so even though there are relationships where that is the case in, in Christ, he is enough, which makes you enough. And I wish I would have heard that. I don't know if I would have been able to hear it, even if someone would have told me. Yeah. Um, but I, I would like that touchstone to look back on. Yeah. Um, and and so this this might be a touchstone for somebody who watches this video. Right. That I heard it said some once that in in God I have nothing to prove and nothing to gain that has not already been given to me in Christ. That's right. Well, glory to God for that, man. Well, yeah. thank you for your faith. Thank you for um, building us up in it and inviting us to journey alongside you. And uh, we're looking forward to spending some time with you in, in the youth room. So yeah, come on, come on out. It's going to be fun. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure for sure. All right. Godspeed. Cool. Thanks, Ethan.